Hi, uh, welcome to Prep Bites. And in this video, we're going to be going in and covering the roadmap for going from zero to mastery in front end development. So, if you're here watching this video, there might be two reasons why. Either you are going in and getting started with front end development, or you just want to go in and see whether you possess all the requisite skill sets for being a front end developer. So, are you familiar with uh, the recent trends in the market? Uh, do you know which will companies go in and hire a front-end developer? Or what is the annual salary that an average front-end developer will get? So we're going to be going in and answering all of these questions. So please do stay tuned and uh, watch the entire video because we'll be going in and addressing all the aspects to that of front-end development. So the entirety of the roadmap will contain lots and lots of milestones. And the very first milestone or the very first uh, language that we'll have to go in and master will be that of HTML. HTML or Hypertext Markup Language basically allows you to go in and display things on a browser. That's it. So your web page, let's say you want you have a web page with you. OK, uh, it's a blank web page. There's nothing in it. So it's like a blank canvas. And now you can go in and paint things on top of it. So that's what HTML does. HTML allows you to go in and add elements elements like images, paragraphs, buttons, and so much more. And that's and this uh, elements are basically added using something called as tags. So in order to go in and get acquainted with HTML, these tags are what you need to go in and get acquainted with. You, there will be tons and tons of tags, each tag with their own use case. So you'll have to go through all these semantic HTML elements and the non-semantic ones. Semantic HTML elements are those HTML tags which tell you exactly what they do. Um, examples can be the table tag or the paragraph tag. Non-semantic elements, on the other hand, uh, they are they don't exactly tell you what they do, uh, what their functionality is. Um, examples being the div element or the span element. Uh, they are moreover just used to go in and contain multiple elements inside of them. Another concept that you need to go in and get familiar with is that of forms, because as you're going to go in and keep building out uh, web pages left and right. Uh, forms are places where the user is going to go in and be able to give some input is something which you will be re uh, requiring quite often. So these are the topics that you're going to be needing in for HTML. So if you are comfortable with HTML, you'll be able to go in and add some elements into that blank canvas of a web page. But uh, that basic web page, because see, if you look at a photo or a picture frame, and that photo doesn't have any color, it's not that so appealing, right? And that's exactly where the second milestone comes into the picture. In order to go in and make your website be look more attractive and pop out, uh, we have something called as cascading style sheet or CSS. CSS allows you to go in and give properties, styling properties to all of the HTML elements that you would have already added. OK, so you can go in and change colors, you can change their size, add some margin, some padding, and it's all depending on your creativity. You can go in and take your HTML web page, your basic HTML web page, and give it an entire makeover using CSS. Um, a few of the concepts that you need to go in and emphasize on will be how to go in and make layouts. Concepts like floats, positioning, and display are really important when it comes to going in and creating a really good looking website. Uh, for the concepts like box model, grid, and flexbox are also important from the interview perspective because they are frequently asked. Then you will have to go in, once you're done uh, with uh, the concepts like positioning and all of them, you have to go in and move on to creating responsive design. So it might happen that you went in and you created a web application. Now it's not compulsory that I'll always go in and open that web application uh, within my computer itself. I might use my tablet for it. I might use my phone for it. So your web application should be able to go in and adapt according to the resolution of that device or adapt according to the device, right? So that's where responsive design comes into the picture, OK? So um, if you are able to go in and make up a basic HTML page, you can add CSS, add some more styles into it, make it look good. And yeah, that, that's all in all well. But we want the people, the user who are using your web application to have a pretty good experience. And that's where JavaScript comes into the picture. JavaScript, the main use case of JavaScript or JS, as people usually call it, is to go in and give dynamic, updatable content. All right? So 
uh, whatever content that will be there in your web page can be dynamically updated. You can use it to go in and manipulate multimedia, animate images. There are so much you can do with JavaScript. Uh, this is saying that goes like anything and everything can be built using JavaScript. There are so many frameworks out there which allows you to build web pages, desktop applications, so much, right? So JavaScript is a really powerful programming language. Unlike HTML that we went in and saw before, which is a markup language, JavaScript on its entirety is a programming language. Okay, so uh, you will have to go in and get started with the basic syntax and constructs, um, which will be like variables, operators, arrays, objects, and so much more, right? Once you're done with the basics, you can go in and learn DOM manipulation. DOM or document object model is basically just the representation of your web page. So using DOM manipulation, you can go in and update the contents of your web page dynamically. All right. Once you're done with DOM manipulation, you can move on to learning ES6 plus and the modular JavaScript because majority of the JavaScript frameworks tend to use ES6 or modular JavaScript. So having a prior knowledge of these particular uh, JavaScript versions will help you in going in and having better understanding while using those frameworks. The last one that you're going to need will be the Fetch API because uh, as you keep building more and more advanced applications, you might end up trying to go in and use some web APIs, right? So in order to go in and interact with those APIs, the JavaScript Fetch API is going to be really important. So by learning HTML, CSS and JavaScript, you basically have all the core skills that are required to go in and become a front end developer but there is a small catch to it, right? So let's say you went in and uh, you started your journey as a front-end developer, right? So um, the majority of the web pages that you'd come across, right? Even if it's a personal website or a corporate website or an e-commerce website, the amount of web pages that you would have is gonna be really high, right? Um, your personal website may just have two, four to five web pages inside of it, okay? A home page and about us and a few more. Corporate websites for companies will have 10 to 15 web pages. E-commerce websites, take example of Amazon, will have 50 to an infinite number of web pages uh, present within the entire application. Okay, so this, you know, having these many pages, okay, is gonna go in and result in having so many HTML documents, CSS documents, and JavaScript documents, right? And this will go in and lead to higher page weight. Now, if you're not familiar with the concept of page weight, it's a really simple idea. Uh, your web application, as I said, is going to have HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, right? So um, those, uh, you know, uh, the HTML document will have some instructions, some code in it. JavaScript uh, file will have some code in it. CSS will also have the same. So all of them together will go in and take up or will require some amount of memory, okay? The total amount of memory, uh, which is taken up by web application, is what we call as page weight. Okay, so if you look at the overall uh, graph that I have over here, uh, the 90 percentile web pages, okay, the, the web pages that come uh, above the 90 percentile, they do have more than 7 megabytes, okay, so it's 6890 kilobytes, so which is almost like 7 megabytes of data, okay. So the more uh, data or resources that a web page is going to have, the less, sorry, the more time it's going to take to go in and load up. Right. So it's responsiveness and the amount of time that will be taken for the production will also be increased because there are so many components, there are so many HTML pages, there are so many JavaScript files, there are so many CSS files that you will have to go in and take into account. Right? Um, if for an intuitive web application, I'll say, then majority of the page weight is contributed by the images and the JavaScript alone. So on a production, right, when you're going in and trying to develop a, a web application for a certain client, um, you will have to go in and deal with multiple pages. You will have to go in and deal with uh, so many JavaScript and CSS elements, and it becomes really cumbersome. And you know, it's it's not a happy feeling to go in and deal with that many files at a single go. So that's where the various build tools and package managers come into the picture. So there are so many tools out there which can help you to go in and be more productive, like in the production build, 
right? So when you're creating up a development, when you're product, when you're producing a develop uh, an, a project, a web application, um, so many tools are available that can help you to go in and integrate and uh, create the final uh, web application. Okay, there are there are uh, tools called as build tools, uh, which can go in and help you to fasten up the whole production process. Uh, we have task runners, like one of the most famous ones being the npm scripts. npm scripts are generally used to go in and launch your deployment server. You can also go in and use it to create your deployment build. Um, you also have things called as module bundlers, like Veet, Webpack, and Rollup. Uh, model bundlers, the idea of model bundlers are really simple. Let's say you have like 15 different JavaScript pages, right? JavaScript files. So what a model bundle will do is it will take all of your JavaScript files and compress them or more like accumulate them into a single JavaScript file. So this makes it way easier in terms of production. Okay. Um, the next thing that you're going to go in and need will be package managers. There are so many package managers that are out there. We have package man uh, a few of the really important ones would be NPM, YARN and PNPM. And what these help you to do is as you go in and start building more advanced web applications, you are going to need tons and tons of web resources and API data, right? So uh, this will require you to go in and add in multiple libraries and modules. And that's exactly where the package managers will come in handy. So once you're done, uh, you know, going through the requisite build tools and package managers, you can then move in and learn uh, about Git and GitHub. Git and GitHub serves uh, basically so has two functionality. The first thing is that it allows you to go in and collaborate with other developers because when you're going to be working in on a certain project, you will be working on a team with other developers. And in order for all of you to go in and consecutively work on the same project, you will be using Git at some point of time for sure. Another functionality that Git and GitHub will provide is that of version control. So version control is basically like having a backup of your app in case something goes wrong. So you're creating a web application and some guy went in and changed something in JavaScript and now your entire application is just crashing left and right. So because of the version control, you can revert back to the previous version that you had, uh, you know, committed onto your repository. Okay. So in order to go in and learn GitHub, you initially had to start with all the Git tools and then get familiar with all the terminologies, uh, learn how to stage, commit, undo changes, branch and merge as well. And then finally, you can go in and see how to go in and collaborate using, using Git and GitHub. Okay. Now, this basically brings us to the last milestone in our roadmap for front-end development, which is going to be the frameworks. Now, frameworks altogether don't exactly, uh, you know, uh, are basically like you're going to be using HTML and CSS and JavaScript. But what these frameworks do is they help you or they basically support you in production of your web application. They provide you with web resources, APIs and so much more such that the overall production can be made way more efficient. The market offers tons and tons of frameworks. You have frameworks like React, Angular, Vue, and Svelte, and these are just the top ones to name here, okay? But the question comes, uh, you know, which one should I go in and start with? Okay, I'm a new front-end developer. What should I start with, right? So um, React, uh, Stack Overflow, a website that all of us should be familiar with, uh, conducted a survey in the year 2022 and it's quite evident that React is the most wanted web framework of 2022. Uh, it is followed by Node, Vue and you have Angular as well uh, way on the last side but it's cool. So um, starting off with a framework which is highly in demand is something that you should get done if you are a fresher. If you're, getting, if you're starting with front-end development, start with the framework which is heavily used or heavily adopted. And React.js would be the best option for it because even if you go in and look across uh, all the places where React is being used, uh, let's forget about Facebook, Gmail, uh, you know, there are tons of other um, um, web applications which utilize um, React, okay? So I'll just show you that in a minute. Um, one of the reasons why React is so heavily used is because of the reason that it has a really large developer community around 1 million plus developers are currently working on React and there's around 70 plus active communities where you can go in and get your 
uh, you know your bugs fixed so if there is an issue that you're occurring trust me someone has asked it before and someone has answered it so you can go in and visit all these active communities so as to go in and level up your understanding of these this particular framework um as i said before um an average uh, front end developer can earn somewhat around like 4.5 lakhs to 12 lakhs an annum all right and um, react alone is used in by tons and tons of companies you take in instagram mintra uh, discord pinterest airbnb uh, dropbox skype these are just a few to name with uh, the main reason why these particular frameworks are used is because they allow you to create something called a single page applications if you are interested please do go in and search for the same because single page applications do provide a really good user friendliness such that your web application can be uh, way more you know uh, user friendly to the people who are using it okay now uh, one of the reasons why react is so widely popular is also because it is backed by a really big tech giant which is meta so uh, you could say that react is here to stay and is not going to go anywhere so once you go in and you master up any of the frameworks um you are almost to the point where you can say that you do have mastery over front end development but that is kind of a paradox because the scenario here is like uh due to the way the market behaves uh there would be a point where you will have to go in and revisit certain technologies that you would have learned and uh, just because they went in and got updated every year you have new frameworks that come out every year you have new updates that come out so it is absolutely mandatory that you go in and you keep revisiting these technologies that you've learned and get acquainted with all the changes and updates that they have brought in see whether you can go in and you know inculcate them into the current web application that you're building so saying that you have mastery over front end development is kind of a niche statement because ultimately the whole aspect of being a front end developer is to be in the state of continuously learning and updating whatever you know skill sets that you have okay so um this would be all for the road map of uh, for zero to mastery in uh, front end development if you have any queries please to drop them in the comments below and um if you want to go in and get some more information in terms of front end development or full stack altogether you can go in and visit uh, www.prepbytes.com and check out our courses uh, that would be all for this video uh, please do like share and subscribe uh, thank you